May I ask, Dr. Oppenheimer, what are you up to? Does uh, anybody live down there? Millions of prairie dogs. But their doom general grows by progress and the fact that they kill each other. I thought man was the only animal to indulge in that sort of thing. They'll be extinct in another thousand years. Still, they might very well outlive us. Bob, it, it works? It works. Oh, you guys. You've pulled off a miracle. We're not sure where that miracle will lead. Where? Why, right to the end of the war. But when? When do we get it? Casing and fusing the bomb will take another six or eight months. You know the problems. Well, I'm activating stage two. I, I, I've got to get me a pilot. Project? No, sir. Relax. A young Tibbets. Under 30. But you got a fine track record. One of the most experienced men we have in the new 29s right now. I run a top secret project. It's codenamed Manhattan. Lansdale heads up security. 50,000 people are involved, and you never heard of it. So he must be doing a good job. The man next to him is the one you'll be working with most closely. His name's Bud Yuana, and he's as good as they come. We stole Deke Parsons from the Navy. Knows more about explosives than any man alive. Dr. Ramsey's field is nuclear physics. His IQ equals my weight. Now, we built a bomb. At least we're down to the short strokes. It's big, it's heavy, it's very sophisticated. And it's a powerhouse. Just how powerful, we're not sure. But this we know, a thousand B-29s loaded with conventional explosives wouldn't equal the force of one nuclear explosion. Nuclear explosion? Atomic. Don't try to picture it, Colonel. I'll explain later. That's quite a secret. 
Now, MacArthur doesn't know about it, neither does Eisenhower, Admiral King. Nobody knows about it who shouldn't. Thank you, Major. Your job is to train and command a special squadron capable of delivering the package. You're accountable to me, the Secretary of War, the President, in that order. Anybody, anything you want, you use the word silver plate. That's your priority code, silver plate. As far as pilots and crews are concerned, the Air Force staff recommends these airmen. I would prefer to pick my own crew, sir. Okay. Get going. Try N for navigator. No, 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 no. We start with a V. Van Kirk. That's right. There you go. Dutchman's best navigator alive. Check out Theodore Van Kirk. I want him. He's got the knockdown on everybody. Security? Ooh, well, well, well. Say there, you got anything on me? Nothing you don't already know. That's right. I'm just a poor, innocent country boy out of yesteryear. You are a wheeler dealer, Farabee. And I mean that in the most unkind sense of the word. You remember North Africa? Operation Chicken? Oh, now wait. Are you talking about the time I roasted a chicken over an open fire in a B-17? I was referring to the great egg caper. You sold a B-17 which really wasn't yours to sell. To an Arab for a daily delivery of eggs. But you see, we needed those eggs. Oh, yeah. Not a one of us in the crew wasn't suffering from beriberi or some other dreaded disease. Sure. Anything to help the morale and health of your buddies. Tibbets. You want it? Yep. All right. Thanks. We located Bob Lewis. Are you sure you still want him? Sure as God made bad apples. Okay. But he makes Farabee here look like Shirley Temple. This place got a name, Sergeant? Why would anybody name nothing? Yeah, this place is Wendover. What, Wendover Desert? But where's the town? Where's the people? Where's Wendover? Buddy, what about we doing here? You tell me, sir. 
You got the bars. Unpleasant surprise. Sweeney, what the dog? Hey, Buck. You seen Paul Tebbets? Not in a month. All I got was proceed immediately to this garden spot of the universe. If you expect me to believe that, you've been his fair-haired boy on two continents. It's the revolving truth. What about you, Lieutenant? My name's Jake Beezer, electronics. I think what we're doing here is pretty obvious. Yeah, well, fool us in, Lieutenant. We're all holy ears. We're going to Europe. Reassignment to the 8th Air Force. What makes you so sure? There's this friend of a friend of my father's who's a brigadier in personnel. Well, I asked him for the 8th because I got this thing about Nazis. They're making lampshades out of my relatives, so I figure I own. So if that's where I'm going and you guys are here, I figure Europe's a destination. I don't mean to be oppositional. Good words, Sweeney. But I kind of fear a defect in your logic. How's that? Because nobody, but I mean nobody in the history of flight, ever staged for Europe and Utah. All right. Get down on all fours here and attack the problem from another angle. Now, outside of him, we're all in B-29s, right? All hot shots, except me. What modesty. No, I'm a super hot shot. The thing is, has anybody so much as seen a B-29 around here? So maybe they're cooking up something new for us. everything they've got after a savage night of fighting, but it's a costly battle, autumn days filled with suffering and pain. These are the men we must not fail. As the eyes of the world turn to the Pacific, the pilots and crews of American bombers carry the mail over Japanese-held islands with monotonous regularity. American wings regaining the Pacific and clearing the skyway to Japan. entirety is a city of wooden structures in a tinderbox that could be set aflame by a single match. We have been spared incendiary bombings by the enemy's B-29s operating out of the Marianas. But it is only a question of time before the Americans recognize that we are a city of millions, a gigantic munitions factory dedicated to the imperial war effort. America is an industrial, a technological country, emphasizing the power of machines on which they depend for arms and materiel. We, on the other hand, believe that people win wars. And here in Hiroshima, every man, woman, and child is a warrior. And so long as people win wars, ours is the inevitable victory. To Smith! How do you think it went? Very well, sir. I was moved so much so that I feel inadequate. In what way? I'm not engaged in the manufacture of munitions. 
I doubt if I will even have the opportunity to build a fire break. You have other duties. I prefer. What, Yamato, would you prefer? Sir, may I respectfully request an immediate transfer to combat duty? The request is admirable, but out of the question. He's a Nazi spy. <laughs> what do we do? Make what you call a citizen's arrest here. As soon as I'm done brushing my teeth. What do we do? Rip off his plumber's wings? I mean, what? Hey, hey, hey! Hey! Give me that wrench. Hey, what's going on, guys? We got us a spy here, Dutch. A spy? Well, let's hang his neck from a pepper tree. It's not a tree within a hundred miles. All right, then, how about the flight tower? Uh, this guy's a spy, all right. The only thing, he's base security. He's spying on us. Fellas, don't mind. I'd like my wallet back. I could use this wrench. Nice pair of flies. <laughs> Tibbets. Some of you know me, some of you don't. I know enough about each and every one of you to have selected you personally for a very special, extremely sensitive project. Those of you who can cut it will be going overseas on a mission that could end the war. And that is all you need to know for now. Do not talk to anyone about what goes on here. Just do your jobs. We'll get along fine. Regarding wives, relatives, girlfriends, nobody is to be told anything about Wendover. Nobody not directly involved with this project and its objectives will be told anything. Now, you will all receive two weeks' leave, starting at 1,200 hours today. Right. Lieutenant Jacob Beezer, stand by. The rest of you dismissed. Lieutenant Jacob Beezer reporting as ordered, sir. Furlough does not apply to you, Beezer. You remain on base. Yes, sir. about Beezer. What about him? Who is he? What's he doing here? I don't know, Paul. Since you didn't request him, I didn't check him out, but I will. I hope this furlough idea of yours pays off. I know it's risky, but it's worthwhile. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 
Oh, I wouldn't worry about it if I were you either. It's my neck if somebody fouls up. One rocket or something. More like a glider with a hook for towing. I'm getting out of here. Well, I knew it'd be something like this. And peas are busting out all over this place. See you, Ferris. Thank you, Lieutenant. Mazer. I understand you put in for transfer overseas. Yes, sir. Why? Five foot seven. Actually, sir, you've been overseas. I haven't. I've been teaching radio and electronics in Florida all this time. I think if you're wearing a soldier suit, you ought to do a little soldier. Aren't you curious about this mission? Absolutely, sir. You ever been to Los Alamos? Never heard of it. Yet have I. That's where we're going. May I ask why, sir? You really don't know? No, sir. These are just between the two of us. Neither do I. I hope you're in the mood for a little conspiracy. We'll have to ask you to remove your jackets and all Air Force insignia. If you get to Los Alamos, you'll be just another couple of broken down Army engineers. civilian population within miles. Mm -hmm. All clear, sir. Happy to meet you, Paul. Your reputation as a pilot is considerable. And Jacob. It's a pleasure to meet a distinguished engineer from Johns Hopkins. I'm sure we have many friends in common. Thank you, sir. It's nice of you to say so. Well, where to begin? Uh, professor, wherever you begin, if you don't mind, do it slowly. My background in nuclear physics is limited. It's really quite simple. 
Actually, it comes down to this. We're delving into an unknown world. We're... We're exploring such issues as what is matter and how short can a short time be basic questions. The problem is how to fuse a sufficient amount of uranium-235 to bring about an atomic explosion and how to make it happen at the precise milliseconds you want it to happen. We've found a way to release the power of the atom and control the energy once it is released? Precisely. There's not a bomber built that can carry a cyclotron in half the physics labs in Berkeley. Dr. Einstein's original version, you'd need three freight cars and a locomotive. We've managed to pare it down. Just as you people have increased the payload of a bomber. This is mind-boggling. I mean, if this thing is just the tiniest flicker off, it could... Precisely. So, we experiment. We test the theory of critical mass. We take a bit of donut-shaped uranium and place it in a little gadget, the guillotine, we call it. A second piece of uranium plunging through the hole brings both pieces close to critical mass. If both pieces were to achieve critical mass, a chain reaction, an atomic explosion. It's the most dangerous game. We call it twisting the dragon's tail. What we have to do now is bring both pieces together over the target in the form of a bomb. Well, Beezer, what do you think? I don't know, sir. I need a little more time, I guess. Right now, I'm just kind of numb. Yeah. Give me a rundown on that, uh, what do you call it, the electronic countermeasures? The bomb's fuse mechanism is partially electronic. Under barometric pressure and at a designated height above the ground, relay switches will trigger the cannon device and... Boom. But what do you do? The bomb's circuitry operates at a designated wavelength. Enemy radar could cause us certain difficulties if the same wavelength were used. They could jam the works. Or even worse, they could blow us up. My job is don't let that happen. Lieutenant Diamato. Would you care to join me for dinner this evening? Sir? My daughter is an excellent cook. At least, I think so. I, I would be honored. Seven o'clock? Yes, sir. It has been said that Roosevelt Smuller is a prisoner in Hiroshima. That is why we have never been attacked. <laughs> More likely, the gods favor our city. Although... I've heard that MacArthur's mother is from Hiroshima. She ordered her son to spare us. In that case, perhaps we might spare San Francisco. My late wife had relatives there. No member of my family has ever left Japan. I know. I'm aware of your family and its proud tradition of service to the emperor. Thank you, sir. Have you thought seriously about your future in other areas? In what sense, sir? About the possibility of marrying my daughter. I would be deeply honored. I'm the one who is honored, General. I shall write to my family immediately. May the gods speed their favorable reply. I got here 10,000 pounds of bomb, Colonel. I think it'll work. And what we need is an adapter. My guys could build it, but that ain't all we need. What we need is a release mechanism to drop it. All right, working around the clock, how long will it take you? Well, I guess we calculate a month. 
I don't have a lot. Tom, what about the British Lancaster? It has a hook type release. That would work. Trouble is how we get it. But I mean to say is sometimes we and our stalwart allies don't seem to see eye to eye. No sweat. Use a magic word. Silver plate. Lieutenant Barris, sir. Colonel Tint wants you on the double. Me? Is there, is that Barris, not Lewis? F is in fast, sir. Yeah, I got the picture, Corporal. Uh, I would get your tattoo crew giving me my own bird. Ain't that dazzling in his purity? P, an airplane commander. And here comes the delivery now. Wow. Look at that uh, thing. Uh, uh, thing. Wow. Right. Oh, Look at oh, that. said a word, not a mutter. Colonel, I swear on my mother's grave. Your mother is alive and in the bloom of health. It's an expression. You were in this cave. Near the Chicago Loop, you were standing next to a priest. Priest? Hey, I never even saw a priest in Chicago. You seem a bit confused, Lieutenant. Wasn't it in a bar about three o'clock in the afternoon? You held a shot of the goodness up. To watch the light dance in it, you said, and you told the good father about a certain rocket and how it would blow old Hitler right down the stock to hell. Don't you remember how the good father reacted to that word, sir? This is entrapment. Now, you know I'm a Catholic. Now, when a priest turns to me looking for a word of reassurance about the war, now, is that such a big deal? That rocket you saw out there is nothing but plywood and paint. It's a phony. You have to shoot your mouth off about it. You blew it. An hour in fact. You're being transferred to ground duty in Alaska. Duty, any mention of this incident or other matters concerning this base, and you'll be subjected to an immediate court martial. All right, Carol. Free to go. I'll see that the news of these Alaskan transfers gets served. Stupid. Not stupid. He's just got a fat mouth. Not him, me. I'm stupid. I picked him. You want him back? Just say the word. No. No, he's dangerous. Get rid of him. Really? Okay. No, but I didn't mean get rid of him that way. Do what you said. Send him to the Aleutians. Lose yourself. Sorry. 
person. What do you like, my shadow? A bodyguard? I guess that's my job, sir. But why? I'm like insignificant here. I'm just a technician. Uh, maybe, sir, but I got orders from both General Groves and Colonel Lansdale, sir, to well, protect you. From what? The guys are already avoiding me because of your devotion. How about a little bribe? Why are they doing this to me? This I don't need. Sir, what I don't need is 20 years in Leavenworth and a dishonorable, which is what I get if you're got at. Me, got it. Hey, why does Beezer need protection? Who'd want to empty his pointed head? And for those of you not yet assigned to Alaska, let me give you one last warning. Control your curiosity. Find a healthy substitute for it. I admit that's not easy in a place like this. We have all the warmth and comfort of Alcatraz. Maybe we can be of some assistance. Those of you that are married will, as of this date, be permitted to send for your wives. And what about the rest of us? I could use a bowl and chain here. Yeah. <laughs> There's a war on. Sacrifices have to be made. Oh. All, right. All right, come on. Temper your tantrums. I'm gonna get back to business. This exercise is going to be carried out by the book. Everything you do is going to be photographed. So you screw up, you boys are going to be in pictures. But there won't be any screw-ups. A single bomb filled with a ballast of 9,000 pounds will be dropped in a 700-foot circle on the northern lip of the target area. Once the bomb is dropped, you will execute a 155-degree diving turn to the right. Now, some of you are probably thinking, why not to the left? Well, that's because we need all the help we can get, even from the torque of the engines. Get the hell out of there as fast as possible. <laughs> you guys having fun back there? Out of fun, Lewis. You go to hell for pleasure. Hey, hot shot. <laughs> Man, I'm more <laughs> It's like a roller coaster. Yeah, the Cody Island special. Now, Lewis, don't get cute. <laughs> My instruments malfunctioned. I never got to your recommended countermeasures. How far off was the plane at impact? Seven miles. Sure. Doctor? Dangerous. And the plane could disintegrate. I understand I'm not faulting your maneuver or the pilot, but uh, too close to the stove, Colonel. Well, how do I get away from the heat if I can't get out of the kitchen? was the Western Front in the last bitter weeks of the winter of 1944. As the news of Europe came through the fog of war, we at home watched the casualties mount. The hope of ultimate victory and peace loomed ever more important. And overhead, the fight goes on. Despite Japanese kamikaze pilots, American naval superiority continues blasting the savage beasts of Bataan out of the sky. Casualties are heavy as our American boys must sail on for the bitter battles ahead. Where were you in 1941? I was in Tokyo at Boe Daigaku Defense Academy. I just received my commission. In those days, a hundred troop ships anchored in that bay. There's no space in the harbor for them to berth. Philippines, Singapore, New Guinea, China. We held all Asia in the palm of our hand. Just as the gods held the 12th precincts of heaven. So it will be again. We have the weapon. Kamikaze. Just as centuries ago, the gods destroyed our enemies in a great typhoon, so our young men will be the typhoon of tomorrow. Devastating, indomitable. Kamikaze.
Master. Started. Always the same questions. How big is that blast going to be? And will the bomber survive? Now, Deke, if they have to shock, it's going to be as big as you're telling me. The bomber won't survive, not if it's hit from the bottom. What if the escape maneuver was in a direct line away from the blast? If instead of banking, you went into a climb? That gives you minimal vulnerability with no broad surfaces exposed. You can't climb fast enough. Besides, it's worse getting hit from the back than it is from the bottom. You're guessing, right? Has anybody ever put a B-29 into a wind tunnel backwards? Deke, I don't need a wind tunnel. I know what happens under natural conditions, like flying into a front with a thunderhead 10 miles high in an anvil lift. What happens? You're hit at the core by opposing wind columns at 150 knots. The plane disintegrates. You ever have that experience? No, or I wouldn't be. The biggest piece of wreckage we found after something like that, and that's six planes, mind you, was a chunk about Jay Big. Hey, hey, Paul! Yes, Bob. Found you. Been looking all over. Come on. Bob, I can't make it. What do you mean you can't make it? Oh, Colonel, I'd like to introduce Lieutenant Beatrice Lubin. Colonel. Uh, Paul and I room together for more than a year. I'd give my right arm for each other. She has changed my life. Splendid. Look, I'd really like to come, but... Come on, Paul. You said you'd meet me for a drink at the club. Then you'll have to start without me. He'd be over later? I mean, Paul, we haven't had any time together since you got here. Yeah, well, <laughs> this war's getting to be an inconvenience. All right, we're off in a cloud of daffodils. Gotta be a logical solution. It's like trying to find a logical solution to flack, an act of God. Well, I don't know about God, but flack can be rendered ineffective with armor. Deke, I tested the B-29 on its vulnerability to attack from Japanese zeros. Now I use P-47 because it's like a zero. But I stripped her of all her armor and I lost that 47. At what altitude? 34,000 feet. I went to 38 like I was shot from a gun. I left it a mile below me. If you can outrun now, climb a P-47, maybe you can outrun the aftershock. Let's strip her down. Armor and gun, see if it spells mother. When are you gonna run the test? Tomorrow morning. Break out the crew, we'll work all night. Paul, you're flirting with a purple heart. Your wife arrives tomorrow. For Chief Sergeant Carty speaking. Hello? Hey, Lucy. How are you? How are you doing? Oh, you look great. Thank you. So where's my husband? Ah, he's busy. Busy? Yeah. Doing what? Uh, running some kind of test. He'll tell you. Would you like to make a bet on it? I mean, do you have any idea what we went through at the front gate? Yeah, more or less. You do? Uh-huh. So what's it all about? You're gonna have to ask Paul. How are the kids? Kids are great. They're outside playing. Please, sit down. You've changed. <laughs> yeah, I guess we all have. You're referring to Paul? Command does uh, strange things to people. Does even stranger things to relationships. The higher he goes, the less I see him. I'm praying to God he doesn't make general. Don't worry, I'm not going to cry or anything. I just have these funny tear ducts. 
I think it's because I'm allergic to deserts. Five moves in six years. It is the first time he hasn't met me, though. Well, so, what's new in your line? Well, still a dirty old bachelor. That's lucky. Think of all those husbands that are catching hell right at this very moment, all up and down this glorious, beautiful street. Well, better get going. Paul and I are running a test. He's waiting for me at the strip. Follow me. Thank you. Sure. Listen. If you could drop by for five minutes, why couldn't he? Lucy, I'm an airplane driver. He's the boss. He's got a thousand things to do. Well, give him my regards. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry.
You've got it. Hmm. That thousand yard stare like you've been through a war. Hmm, not quite. But it'll do till the real thing comes along. How'd it go? The test? Oh, successful. Beyond my wildest nightmares. God, I'm glad to see you. Yankees win a double header. I surrender. My name is Lieutenant Jacob Beezer, 0623-72511, and that's all I'm required to tell you according to the Geneva Convention, please handcuffs, no blindfold. Some lock nut slippage, but I think I got it fixed. Stephen Krasky. Is that your real name? Always has been, girl. Oh, it's been like Americanized, you know, Polish names, they sound like a throat disease. Apparently, the judge had no trouble in pronouncing it. Judge? April 5, 1940, Toledo, Ohio, you killed a night watchman. Two years in Pontiac before you escaped. It's all there. Your police records, transcripts of the trial, everything. You might say I've got a problem. Come on, Krasky, I've got a problem. I need you. You're good at your job. Sorry I let you down. Well, you haven't. Not yet. This file is the only copy of your pre-war record. You play straight with me, it stays in the squadron safe. Japan throws in the towel, I'll give it back to you. Personally, throw in a book of matches. Thank you, sir. Get to work. You've still got to meet two men convicted of manslaughter. And a couple of three fugitives the FBI can't seem to locate. What is he doing here? Now, wait a minute, Paul. You wanted the best. These guys are professionals. They found a home, a place to hide. They got forged papers and false identities. Like Krasky. Well, that's some option, isn't it? We get rid of Krasky because he killed a man. Or we give him another chance so he can help us kill thousands. please. Gentlemen, these bombing records are not satisfactory. I repeat, not satisfactory. Now, by all procedural standards, they're fairly good, but they are not good enough. Now, you've all been around here long enough to know what I want, what I demand, and you better give it to me. 
or I'm going to give you the whitest Christmas you ever dreamed of. <laughs> I'm glad you're amused, Louis. I'm sure you're going to find it even funnier when you're mushing a dog team somewhere in the outskirts of Nome. Now, we're going to take it again, step by step from the top. Coming up. Thank you, Dutch. AP inside. All right, Lewis, I've got the plane. It's all yours. Bomb away. Norton bomb site? Mm-mm. Triple checked, calibrated, and checked again. Then what is it? Mechanical error? Human error? You know, it could be because we never dropped a bomb from 31,000 feet before. I want Captain Lewis, his airplane and crew on the line loaded for another run right now. Exactly the way you dropped the last one. I've got it. Approaching AP. That's it. Bomb away. That's it. That's what? Woo! Hang out the gold star, muddy your voice in the Army Air Corps. Lewis, save your lousy comedy for the officers' club. Tom, you moved. Your head, your whole body, everything. Oh, Paul, maybe an inch, less than an inch. Yeah, but at 30,000 feet, that inch is worth 500 feet off target. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't sight and freeze and work the bomb sight at the same time. Nobody can. What you need, suppose you had a headrest. Something to put your head against so you couldn't move. Approaching. And now, bomb away. <laughs> done and done. This is Sergeant Crawford. He's going to help me. Why don't you kill him? Good evening, Mark. Good to meet you. Evacuate the area. About face. Forward. March. Well, Lieutenant, you're exactly what the doctor ordered. Oh, and I just hope you and the Colonel have a good time. Let me get that. Tibbetts residence. Yes, I believe he is. Mask. One second. General Groves. Sir, sir, I filled you in up till 1800 hours tonight. 
If one of your wills needs a briefing, I respectfully suggest you fill him in. Then I can... Yes, sir. Yes, sir, loud and clear. Sir. They're warming up a P-47 for you. Destination, Washington. I wasn't told why, but... I was. Honey, I... Oh, it's all right. I wouldn't dare ask what it's all about. Keep it in the family. Don't drive him nuts. Let's go. Good morning, gentlemen. Mr. President. Please be seated. Mr. President. Alexander. Gentlemen, I have here a letter delivered to me personally by my good friend, Alexander Sachs. Alexander? Sir. The letter is signed by most of the scientists working on the bomb, including Albert Einstein. It is an expression of deep moral concern. They are opposed to our using the bomb. One moment, Alexander. Perhaps Colonel Tibbetts should share our thoughts on the subject. I'd like to share his. Ah, Colonel. President. May I present Mr. Sachs, Sir. Secretary of War Stimson, uh -huh. and I believe you know General Arnold and General Groves. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Go ahead, Alexander. The people at Los Alamos believe that the enemy can be beaten by conventional weapons. Were we the first to use the bomb, we might face a court of international inquiry in Geneva. Inquiry? Into what? What might be interpreted as an act of barbarism. Barbarism. If Germany had had the bomb, would she have used it? Would Japan? I'm speaking of our responsibility, not theirs. Well, the scientists haven't threatened to walk off the job, have they? No, sir, but the heat's on. Meanwhile, our losses keep them out. Alexander, can your people offer a positive solution to this problem? Yes, sir. After a successful test is run on the bomb, we could arrange for a demonstration before a body of allied and neutral scientists with representatives of the major religious faiths. Won't you have them do then? Vote on the issue? Now, every day our casualties are mounting. In the battle for the city of Naha and Okinawa, our army lost over 5,000 men every day. Now, now, your people, would they like to demonstrate about that? We would like to publish a warning to be sent out to the enemy that the bomb would be dropped in a specified area after allowing sufficient time for the evacuation of human and animal life. Oh, for God. Anything else, Alexander? Just this, sir. An ultimatum would then be issued to our enemies, demanding immediate surrender. Failure to comply with this would subject them to atomic annihilation. You mean we let them know 24 hours in advance and the whole world will be watching? Exactly, sir. Watching our airplane carrying the bomb. Watching it come in like a sitting duck with every gun in the Japanese Empire trained on Alexander... How long would it take to carry out your program? About four months, sir. Hmm. Colonel, how do you feel about it? What are your moral convictions? Very strong, sir. Mr. Sachs would like four months to carry out his program. With Americans dying every day, I feel, Mr. President, that we're morally bound to end this war as soon as possible using every weapon at our disposal. I'm inclined to agree with the Colonel. Tatsu. Yes. It is a wondrous fight. Thank you. I thought with your interest in flying... I want to thank you for that, too. It is you first interested me in it. I hope I have brought you good news. Yes, excellent news. Our father has given his consent to my marriage. Congratulations. Now you may congratulate me. The Imperial Air Force has accepted me. But you're only 14. Only? You weren't much older when you took the sacred oath. Tatsuo, I... I want you to be proud of me. As I am proud of you. 
But there'll be time enough. There's never time enough. Our country needs all of us. Now. Who told you that? You. You've said it many times. The story of Yanks in retreat before the surprise enemy assault that shocked all America. Soldiers fighting snow and freezing temperatures, along with the greatest Nazi offensive the Yanks have faced. This is the day-to-day -day life of our men along the Western Front. The attack did not surprise them. They have been fighting the Germans in Europe for more than six long months, and they know them for the fanatical fighters they are. Despite the enemies of cold and exhaustion, our boys take time out for the traditional Christmas dinner as they deck the halls with some Yuletide cheer. C-45. Sign me up. May I see your pass and priority, please, Captain? Silver plate. Yes, sir. Destination. Newark. Okay. I'm going to take up stockings. All right, guys. That's me, that's me, that's there you go. And look for you, and I'll just... Paul, oh, don't you think you should make an appearance at the club? Uh, honey, they don't want the old man hanging around tonight. He's just going to put a crimp in their style. Don't you want to make a fuss over them and, you know, vice versa? But what I don't want is to have eggnog spilled all over my shoes on Christmas Eve. And besides, I want to spend time with my family. Well, they're your family, too. Daddy, now read to us! Ah, Merry Christmas. Before Christmas. And all through the house. I don't believe a word of this. Well, wait a minute. What do we owe this little bit of cynicism? 
I don't believe in the part about the old man flying over the rooftop. Uh-huh. All right. Suppose you think of Santa's sled, like this, as a real sophisticated airfoil, okay? And the reindeer are like thrust, like the engines on the B-29. Now, by utilizing your thrust, by revving them up, making the engines go faster, the reindeer, you know, go real fast, it pulls that airfoil through the air mass. And because the airfoil is contoured, it's larger and rounder on the top than it is on the bottom. The air travels faster over the top than it does on the bottom. That creates a partial vacuum. That's lift. Oh. Daddy, read! Ah. It was the night before Christmas, all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Not even a mouse. Not even a mouse. Silent night. Holy night. All is calm. All is bright. Christmas always makes me sad. yourself to countermand my orders that no flight personnel were to leave this base over Christmas. Your flight log. Flying through a blizzard. You expect me to control the weather? At an altitude of 100 feet. I had it drop down to follow the road line. Didn't occur to you to use instruments. My compass was out, sir. Why did you land in a cornfield in Indiana? It was on the approach to the airstrip. Why didn't you use the airstrip? Because I was out of gas. It was one gorgeous piece of flying. That's your considered opinion? I could prove it. Oh? I'm alive. And I've got a deadline to meet, and I'm damn well gonna meet it with or without your help. Tibbetts, you're obsessed with this mission. And you are not irreplaceable. Oh, that's your considered opinion? There's gonna be a lot of talk on the base that I'm letting you off easy because of our friendship. Don't even start to believe it. Oh, come on, Whoa. You're dismissed. Roosevelt died this afternoon at Warm Spring, Georgia. 
New details are available at this time, but we Annie? have learned that Vice President Truman Annie? has been notified. Someone please President listen, Franklin President Delta Roosevelt is dead. Roosevelt died this afternoon at Warm Springs, Georgia. Paul? Although no confirmed Paul details Dean? have been released to the press, an early report states that the President died from a cerebral hemorrhage. It is expected that Vice President Truman... The funeral procession of President Franklin D. Roosevelt made its way through the streets of Washington as a nation in mourning paid tearful tribute to its beloved leader, a man who will long be remembered for bringing light to this time of darkness. I, Harry S. Truman, do solemnly swear that you will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of your ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve... Boy, is he in for surprise. And the Constitution of the United States. He didn't know? Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. <laughs> $2,050 for glass and plumbing, paint $450, carpet $900. How much? Well, there's more to this list, you know. What's the total? $9,443 minimum. Listen, I'm awfully sorry about this. Looks like they all of a sudden got out to two tickets. Yeah, I get uh, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Here they come. like the death march on Bataan. You know what's happening, Paul? You've got a stable full of overtrained fighters and they're getting meaner every day. For weeks now, they've been ready for action. Oh, they're ready. The bomb's not. From here on, it's all downhill and that's not good. Dutch, notify all personnel, pack it up, and stand by for immediate departure. Where to? Western Pacific. The island of Tinian. Think you can find it? Just give me a flashlight. Deke, notify General Groves. Tell him the 509th has taken off.
Tibbet. We've got a fuel injection problem in Captain Lewis's plane. Over. On my way. Got a sticky little situation with Crawford. Is it? He tried to stow away on Sweeney's airplane. Taking that bodyguard business a little serious, isn't he? Nah, uh, that's not it. He was a waste gunner before he got shot up. Wants his job back. What's going on? I think she's got a hold, Colonel. Lewis! You're gonna be all right? It's a long haul over deep water. Like a duck going after a June bug. Good luck. Thanks, Paul. Keep in touch. Clear on two. Clear on two. Two's clear. overseas? On whose authority? On mine, sir. Frankly, I expected some flack. From who? From you. Do you know what you've done? Yes, sir, I think I do. No, you don't. You forced their hand. Whose hand, sir? Los Alamos. Without your airplanes, there's no way those scientists can keep tinkering with their toy. Good thinking, Colonel. You got us moving. in here is deafening. Where are the boys? They're over at Annie's. They're spending the night. Great. I think so. Why don't you take your shower? Yeah. Honey, where's my chart? My map of the Pacific. The boys take it down? Oh, don't blame them. They were only playing Air Force. I don't want them fooling with my Listen, things. tomorrow I'll put it back up. 
anyway. There's been a cessation of hostilities declared. I'm surprised you haven't heard about it. It was on the radio. Hmm. Well, nobody tells me anything. This letter is written in haste, as they keep us cadets busy morning till late at night. Being taught all of the movements of flight training we will need in our glorious opportunity to serve our emperor and the empire. Of course, scarce gasoline and planes are not used at this stage of our training. But I know you'll be proud of me, as I am proud to be part of the great victories to come. Affectionately, your brother Keo. feels the fury of Allied artillery attack. Nazi rail lines and ports are utterly smashed as the attack roars on. Eight kilometers, nearly five miles, and still not a German shot has been fired. The great German defeat was on the way. In another section, our boys receive a surprise visit by General Eisenhower, known to all the G.I. Joes as Ike. The victorious Yanks carry the word the Hun is on the run, and the Allied drive was on. Wave 
after wave of speedy invasion barges carry in combat troops and vast quantities of supplies, but the Japanese offer formal resistance to the establishing of beachheads. The Japanese took the island in June of 1942. Now the Americans have come back to retake it. And despite heavy casualties, they are here to stay as they mark the way to Tokyo. The city's morale is high, and but... It is up to you to keep it that way, gentlemen. But, sir, what is our position? On the Goto Islands, south to the Osumi Peninsula, a series of interlocking defenses stretch back from the coast, layer upon layer, devised to inflict the utmost casualties to the Americans. Our people of all ages, in or out of uniform, will be utilized. Expect the initial assault. Against Kyoto, 1 November, with a force of 815,538 troops. The invasion of Hanshu is scheduled for next March, with an additional commitment of over 1,100,000 men. General Marshall, what are our estimated casualties? Well, Mr. President, it's difficult to give a specific figure. Mm -hmm. Give me your best estimate. How many casualties can we expect if we have to invade the island of Japan? Over one million of our men. MacArthur thinks we'll be fighting a guerrilla war that could last 10 years, a war of attrition. On the other My hand... My estimate is closer to 20 years. The Japanese are committed to defending the empire to the last man. Casualty estimate is 4 million Japanese. On the other hand, there's a significant bloc that would like to end the war. The Japanese would sue for peace if they were encouraged to believe they might be given favorable terms. The problem there, Mr. Compton, is our demand for unconditional surrender. Gentlemen, I don't believe the American people would settle for anything less than unconditional surrender. Not after Pearl Harbor, Bataan, the way they've treated our captured American airmen. You know, what are the estimates of casualties for the Japanese if we decide to drop the bomb? About 20,000 Japanese killed. Mr. President... My colleagues of the scientific community respectfully request a non-military bomb drop to demonstrate to the Japanese the futility of continuing the war. The thing that's been worrying me is that how can we be so sure this thing's going to work if it's never been tested? Well, a warning followed by a dud would be a real disaster. Assuming that it would work, I doubt whether a sufficient demonstration could be devised that would convince them to throw in the sponge. The point is, we don't have enough bombs, and it's vital that a sufficient effect be attained as quickly as possible with the few we have on military-industrial targets. To expect a genuine surrender, the Emperor and his military advisors must be administered a tremendous shock, carrying with it the proof of our power to destroy the Empire. Such a jolt would save many times the number of lives, both for America and Japan. Gentlemen, I don't believe we have much of a choice. President Truman, in his speech at Potsdam, has called upon the government of Japan to proclaim now the unconditional surrender of all Japanese armed forces and to provide proper and adequate... General Nagai is becoming impatient. Truman will not accept a negotiated peace. It seems the Americans' demands for an unconditional surrender includes a form of government dictated by the Americans. What kind of government? One that may unseat the emperor from his throne. Send the general in, please.
You have heard Truman's ultimatum. An extraordinary situation. Which calls for extraordinary measures, does it not? It can no longer be avoided. It seems we are pierced by the horns of a dilemma. On the one hand, we of the army must stand obedient to the Emperor's will. And on the other? I cannot see how the Americans' demands can be ignored. You've changed, sir. Reality makes believers of us all. That depends on one's interpretation of reality. There is a third consideration which understandably has not occurred to you. Do you intend to support the Emperor, whatever his response to Truman might be? So I have resolved. Your resolve needs stiffening. The Emperor has never understood the military. He is an amateur with a second-class mind, devoted only to his marine biology, playing with his fish and his shells and his seaweed like a child with a toy. That is enough, sir! And you! Your only allegiance is to your class, an aristocracy of samurai clinging to an outworn creed, a feudal notion of chivalry. I revere the throne. I would die for it. Perhaps you shall. And you, Nagai, what would you die for? The army. We shall continue the fight, even when there's no avenue of hope or escape or survival. Even if there is no emperor, I suggest you reconsider your priorities. Sergeant. I'm amazed. I didn't think you'd have me half packed. Practice. You've had a lot of that. Loose, I, I don't know what to say. Are you mad? I don't think so. No. <laughs> well, I'm off. Yeah, I know. In a cloud. <laughs> Luce, I've got to go to Tinny. So I'll go say goodbye to the boys. They're not here, Paul. They're staying with my mother. What? I've got something I want to tell you. We're going to be staying with her for a while. Lucy, when I get back, we'll sort things out, that's all. We'll never do that, Paul, you know that. It's just... It just got too confusing. That's what I wanted to tell you. That you're leaving me. I think it's mutual, don't you? I know you've got a plane to catch. You promised to be good to yourself.
be here, sir. Now, I've been told on good authority that you know more about this bomb than any flyer in the Air Force. Is that true? It's possible, sir. I have more experience. In that case, I'd be inclined to say we can't risk losing you. You're too valuable. Just what shape is your outfit in? Excellent, sir. The best. I'm sure. But I've yet to see an outfit that, uh, under ordinary circumstances, didn't screw up on its first combat mission. And under ordinary circumstances, I'd keep you on the ground. But these aren't ordinary circumstances. This is a one-shot, where your expertise might be put best to use flying the mission. Anything we can do to help you, you let me know. Thank you, sir. I am living in a dream which, tomorrow, will transport me from the earth. My brother, I do not want you to grieve over my death. Death to me will come as swiftly as the shattering crystal, as bright and sudden as a flash of fire. Death is nothing to those of us who have been called gods without earthly desire. I shall carry the poem you gave me as I join with a full heart that glorious band of brothers who have gone before me. the Battle of the Pacific, U.S. warships and aircraft carriers fight off Japanese air attacks before they can unload final reinforcements of men and equipment to blast out the enemy. Suicide Japanese units hiding out in mountain ridges and jungle terrain are flushed from their fortified positions. The casualties of this three-week island battle are heavy, as 1,800 Americans and many Japanese are killed. But thanks to our brave men, a vital airbase is taken, enabling our allied B-29s to knock out the Japanese-held islands of the Pacific. Sometimes a battle-scarred bomber staggers back to our base on Tinian, only to flatten out at the last heartbreaking second. Eleven men and a bomber that didn't quite make it. Elsewhere on Tinian, our boys still have time for some fun and sun between their missions on the U.S. Sky Road to Japan. Still got blood on it. Let you have it for a song? My country. <laughs> a dozen eggs and a fifth of booze. Anything you got. I think I might try to liberate one myself. It's up to you, but it ain't all that easy, mate. You feel like exploring the moon? Yeah, sure.
hurry. You got a cake in the oven? Here's that cake. to reward each of you, but I think what I'm about to say is going to disappoint most of you. Not everyone is going to be able to participate on this first mission. We can't find a way to fit you all into one airplane. So regarding assignments, Captain Etherly, you and your crew will make a weather check of the primary target, report back to the airplane making the actual bomb run. Major Wilson, secondary target. Major Taylor, your responsibility is for our potential third. Major Sweeney, you will pilot a flying laboratory to measure the effect of the blast. Major Marquardt, you're going to carry photographic equipment. Record this event from a distance. Captain Lewis. Sir! Captain Lewis and his crew, with certain replacements, will make the actual bomb run. Yeah! I will notify those officers and men personally. Gentlemen, our primary target the city of Hiroshima. Hey there, Beezer boy. How you doing? Um, you ever think about your thumb? It's a fearsome weapon. Well, it's just part of the bomb side, you know, an extension. Yeah, I guess you could look at it that way, but doesn't it ever bother you? Well, you know, it only bothers you when you think about the damage. Death up close. Yeah. Now, you know, I've had friends shot up by flak over Germany. It wasn't a pretty sight at all. But you know, Jacob, you can't let it bother you. Not so as it interferes with your job, you know? Yeah. Can't you read? You're off your beat, mister. That's my B-29. This here order says put this here name on this here plane. That's what I'm doing. Whose orders? Colonel Tibbetts. 
Check it out. He's in the Bombay. Do you authorize putting that funny name on my B-29? Bob, what you have to understand is that this plane is government issue. It's assigned to you. And on this mission, I'm the airplane commander. Farabee's the bombardier, Van Kirk is the navigator. What am I gonna do? Stand on a runway, wave goodbye? No, Run you... beside the plane, maybe? Bob, you're the co-pilot. Great. By the way, that uh, funny name, who's Nola Gay? It's my mother. Colonel? Captain Parsons is just coming, sir. Jepson. Ordnance expert? What's your estimate on the proximity fuse? We're dealing with an untested device, Colonel. I mean, the bomb's never been dropped before, so we just don't know. Hello, Deke. Bob? How's Beezer? Oh, Jake's fine. Crawford business through him, but uh, this works 4 0. There's something else, Paul. Is there any trouble on takeoff? Engine failure? I'd rather not have the bomb armed. An arm until we're airborne. Trouble is, I don't know whether Jepson and I can handle it. And Groves insists that the bomb be armed before takeoff. Groves is not here. By the time he finds out about it, it'll all be over. You can't arm it in the air, can't you? Never done it before. Well, you have all day to learn. When, may I ask? just as soon as the war is over. If you feel that is too soon, Father, I shall do as you say. Good. I feel that it is not soon enough. Get married now, tomorrow. Get away from the war for a while. But, sir... Lieutenant, do you think perhaps you are indispensable? No, sir. In that case... There is an inn about 100 kilometers from here where Aya's mother and I took our wedding trip. The inn has a garden with a thousand flowers. Thank you, Father. Oh, now, do you expect the fragrance will last forever? safe spot in this entire island. Colonel Tibbetts, this is Tower Control. All three weather aircraft are on their way. Roger, Tower Control. Paul, at the first sign of any difficulty over the target area, engine malfunction, anything, give one of these cyanide capsules to each of your men. Come on, come on, come on! Two! Two! Oh! Another pretty fish. Four! Five! There we go. There we go. Yeah. 
Good. One more good shot, guys. Hey. 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 Okay, come on around here. I want to get a group shot in front of the Nola Gay, huh? Come on in front of the, uh... Here we go. Gentlemen, line up right here so we get Nola Gay in the back row. Right? I'm sorry, Kurt. General Groves has ordered a pictorial record be taken of the Nola Gay's departure. He knew he wanted pictures. I didn't think he wanted a Hollywood premiere. Well, there we go. Very nice, gentlemen. Come on, a couple more shots here, please. Why does it look so crowded? Uh, how about the flight crew only, please? Ground crew, please move off. Thank you, gentlemen. Right, a few more shots. Come on, guys, don't look so nervous. Here we go. Come on, a couple more shots. All right, that's all. That's all. That's all you get. You know, that's it, sir. Ah, uh, uh, hey, look, you guys. I just want the guys on my crew to know that we got it made here, see? I mean, this is the morning that we're going to win the war. So don't screw up. Got it? Huh? You got it? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right. Gun, aren't you? Well, the only gun we got left. You're in the best spot for a picture. See what you can get. What you got there, Lieutenant? A music box? No, Schumacher. It's a wire recorder. I'm going to record the crew's reaction if there's an explosion. And if there is, who knows what we're going to say. Lieutenant? Yeah? One last shot, huh? Wave goodbye. Goodbye. Not me, Charlie. We're coming back. Everyone, clear the field! Clear the field! Right now! Clear it! All clear!
Argentinian Tower. This is Blackjack. The runway is clear. Get the lights.
song? Yeah, no, I'm uh, keeping a record, a journal. What for? For my grandchildren. How are you gonna have grandchildren when you're not even married yet? <laughs> grandchildren? You're a kid, a hot pilot playboy. Report from Saijo. They have spotted an enemy aircraft, one B-29, heading west. A single B-29? It's just a reconnaissance plane. Target. Hey, 
8 feet coming up, about 30 seconds. Beezer, how's it look back there? Clear. No enemy interference on proximity fuse wavelength. I'm turning on the tone. All right, Colonel, I have the airplane. You got it. Stand by for tone break and turn. 8P. 15 seconds. In the United States, the Japanese surrender was made known to the American public in the late afternoon of August 14th. In Japan, the people waited to hear their emperor speak. They had been told in the past and still believed they were winning the war. In Hiroshima, a crowd gathered by the demolished railway to listen to the sacred words of their divine monarch. The word surrender was never uttered in Emperor Hirohito's speech. But a great number of those listening no longer thought they were winning the war. They believed they had won. For as one of those in the crowd at Hiroshima Station later recalled, we thought there was no other way the war could end. To the leaders of the Western Allies and the peoples of a war-torn world, the bomb was a miracle of deliverance. But it was clear that the bomb was also a warning to a world that would never be the same again. The bomb brought peace, but only man can keep that peace. <laughs> 